Hello, I'm Bill Sheehy from Latin American Masters Gallery here in Santa Monica, California. And I'd like to talk a bit about Francisco Toledo and his exhibition Multiples, which is currently showing at our gallery. The Mexican writer and intellectual Jaime Moreno Villarreal, in an article he recently wrote on Toledo's exhibition here at our gallery entitled The Dual Condition, talks about Toledo's work in terms of a word from the study of rhetoric called amphibiology, which is the study of words which have more than one meaning. And he talks about this idea of dual meaning as being central to Toledo's work as an artist. I'd like to explore that idea and how it relates to Toledo's work as seen in this show. The exhibition has as its backbone what is arguably uh, uh, four or five images. Uh, one of them is of crabs, another one is of elephants, uh, another still of insects. But what these all have in, have in common is that they are multiples done in series, numbered series of up to tens, of up to ten images rather, and what we would normally think of as a print or an edition. But in Toledo's case, what he's done is he's made an edition of nine, five, or ten pieces, but he's hand-painted each of those pieces or added unique elements, collage elements. They might be mica, they might be vellum, they might be a mixture of different materials such as watercolor or oil to make each work, in fact, a unique work of art, thus obscuring the idea of the multiple and the unique work of art and getting us to ponder what, in fact, defines the unique work and the multiple. So this is one idea of duality, of a dual idea of, of, of what a work is. In another way, by his use of materials, by combining watercolor, oil, mica, silver, gold leaf, goat skin, what have you, all in the same piece, we also arrive at works which inhabit many different worlds at the same time, be, it, be they collage, oil painting, watercolor, sculpture, what have you. This is another idea of duality or amphibiology. In another way, Toledo is very attracted to works which obliterate categorization or hierarchy, and you can see this in his choice of animals that he chooses in his, so to speak, zoology of his imagery. You'll see him using crocodiles, uh, frogs, or crabs in his work. And those are all animals which inhabit both the world of land and the world of water. Yet another idea of duality or amphibiology. Let's talk specifically now about Toledo's um, uh, approach to the crab, an image which, which has been central to his work for many years. The crab in Toledo's work is interesting. If you look at it in terms of his personal biography, he is a crab, he's a cancer. Um, so the work has a autobiographical reference in his work. Um, but Toledo in many of his works is also using, uh, many of the crabs, is using mica in the works. That's very interesting because by using mica, which is, for those of you who don't know it, is a material, again, dealing with duality. It's a material made out of mineral, but has this sheet quality that's much like paper, very, very fragile, very, very delicate. And that fragility has a reference both to the artist's own sense of mortality, um, his own fragility, and it also has a very specific connotation when you think about the crab shell and the way the shell can break, the way the, the, the crab shell is in fact very fragile. So you have a sort of rhyming, if you will, between the frig fragility of nature and the natural world, very specific to the crab, but which can be generalized to nature and also very specifically to Toledo's own life because he in fact is a cancer or a crab. So you start to get an idea of the way in which his mind works, moving from the personal to the universal and from the animal to the human. And in a way, even though he's interested in obliterating categorization and hierarchy, you start to see that the reason that he does this is that because his, his vision ultimately is a unifying vision that ties everything in the world together. 
Speaking of tying things together, one of the central uh, motifs in the show is the use of a net. Many of the pieces in the show involve creatures from the ocean, uh, lobsters, shrimp, crabs, fish. And many of the uh, images in his show are tied together with the imagery of the net. The net is very interesting in Toledo because again, even though it's very beautiful, it has the obvious possibilities like a spider's web of, of capturing, of, of um, in, in, in snaring the living creatures of the natural world. And just as those creatures are in danger of being caught or ensnared and trapped, this also speaks to the very human idea of freedom and of our own desire not to be ensnared and entrapped by these various objects, man-made objects, I might add, in the world around us. Again, Toledo is moving from, from a very kind of abstract idea to something very, very specific. I'd also like to say something about um, two of the other really central images in his show. The first is a large image that he's done, which is called Fish with Man. It's a very large, dynamic uh, construction, very sculptural, of large blocks of mica that have been cut out and collaged to a surface of, of uh, oil and ink and sewn to the surface. All of these pieces are sewn. And then Toledo has etched the image of this uh, fantastic fish to the surface with all of its scales and this iridescent eye. And then below the surface, you, below, the, below this giant fish, like a leviathan, like a whale, you see the image of a man swimming along. This image may have been inspired by Toledo's childhood reading of Pinocchio, and Pinocchio's being swallowed by the whale and then being expunged by the whale back into the sort of ambiotic fluid of the ocean. But whatever its sources are, the image is very powerful. And it suggests both the grace, a moment in time where, where this giant of the ocean seems to be peacefully co coexisting with man, the swimmer, and also the relative unimportance of man in relationship to this giant in the ocean. The last piece that I'd like to talk about is an image that Toledo has made of an elephant, of all things. And I think as a child, he may have seen the circus as it came through his native Oaxaca. And who doesn't love elephants? They're fantastic, ele they're these fantastic creatures. And in this piece from the show, Toledo has made these wonderful variations on elephants being pushed by skeletons, which of course are very fragile and are in, a, in some sense a stand-in for humanity and for our own mortality, obviously. But what's really captivating about the, the image is the weight and girth of these giant elephants and the effort that the skeletons seem to be making and trying to push and, and get the elephants to just budge an inch. When you think about what's involved in the world in all of our struggles to move, um, move those great obstacles in our lives, be they on a personal level, be they on a political level, when you think about trying to make political change in a, in a corrupt com political environment, when you talk about trying to make profound changes in the world that are uh, rooted in, um, um, that have as part of their, um, their weight, uh, greed, um, one thinks of the, uh, the destruction of natural habitat in the world, the, the destruction and co-opting of beautiful architectural sites, the, um, the overbearing um, influence of the media and dumbing down and trivializing our culture. Toledo is an artist and a human being who stood against a lot of these things that I've been talking about in a very quiet way. But I might add, with all due respect to Toledo, who doesn't like publicity and in fact will probably be uncomfortable with this video, um, Francisco Toledo takes most of the money from his art and he puts it into social programs uh, that could vary anything from supplying art supplies to the prisons in Mexico, to ecological programs, to the preservation and diffusion of culture throughout his native Mexico, including great arts libraries and museums like the Alvarez Bravo Center for Photography and the Museum of Contemporary Art, and I could go on and on and on. 
he does all of this with not with the hope that he's going to save the world because he's very actually pessimistic about where we're going as a world and the sort of costs of civilization. But he feels an obligation nonetheless to try to do what he can in this moment to try to help those around him and to try to do something to stem the corruption and the, and the violence being done to our natural habitat. In that sense, he's a lot like the skeleton very fragile and moving against that elephant over time and trying to push it just a little bit. I think he's one of the world's great artists. Uh, it's a great honor, obviously, to be able to work with him. And I think he has, um, he's a real inspiration as a human being as well. I hope those of you who have the opportunity will come in and see his work. Thank you very much.